certainly good to be with all of you. Greetings, especially from New Orleans. I welcome all of you to come and visit us, but please don't come during the hurricane season. You know, I heard a story about a jubilee of a group of sisters. And one of the sisters that was celebrating her jubilee was celebrating her 70th year in religious life. And she was really like a pillar in that community. She was known for her spirituality, but she was very ill. And so she wasn't able to attend all of the celebration. And now it seems that she is turning for the worse. And all of the sisters gather around her bed in the infirmary. And she happened to mention to them that she wanted a glass of milk. Well, one of the young sisters said, you know, I heard that if you put a little whiskey in the milk, it gives you a little pep, it gives you a little perk. And that's what they did. And so they gave her the milk with a little whiskey. And now she's dying. And everybody is gathered to hear what are the last words of this holy religious for 70 years. And all of a sudden she said the last words. They were stunned. What she said was, don't ever get rid of that cow. <laughs> you know, during this past summer, five weeks we heard the scriptures on John's gospel about the Eucharist. And one of my favorite was the gospel that I read today, the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. And we all know that story. The story goes that this young boy, in the morning his mother packed him a little lunch of fish and loaves. He's going off to meet his friends. They're going to have a picnic. But all of a sudden he spots on this mountain Jesus and multitude of people. And somehow he was attracted to Jesus and his words. And all of a sudden he overheard Jesus speaking to the disciples. And he said to them, we have to feed these people. And the disciples said, Lord, come on. We don't have enough money to even give them a morsel of food. And all of a sudden the little boy stood by Jesus and said, Listen, Mr. Jesus, I have loaves and fish. You could have my offering, my gift. And we know what Jesus did. He didn't say, Sorry, kid. There's thousands of people here. Loaves and fish that you have can't feed them. Rather, he took it. He blessed it, the offering. He broke it, and he fed thousands and thousands of people. I couldn't help but think the connection of that gospel to what we are celebrating here today with our brother missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate. For some of us here 40, 50, 60 years ago, we, like that little boy, young, were attracted to Jesus. We were attracted to his words and his message. And we, like the little boy, saw thousands of people who also were hungry. And we could have said, you can't use me. Instead, he came to Jesus and offered himself with his imperfections, with his weakness, with his sin, with his brokenness. And he said, here, Lord, take me. Take this offering of my life. And Jesus didn't laugh at us. He knew who we were. He knew our brokenness. He knew our imperfections. He knew what we lacked. But he took us as we are because we came and offered ourselves. We made an oblation. And that's what we celebrate today, the gift of our oblation as missionary oblates of Mary Immaculate. We come aware of our own limitations. But we come knowing that if Jesus takes us, he can touch us, also break us, but also use us to feed thousands. And what do we feed thousands with? A message, a message of hope. A number of years ago, there was a priest in the former eastern province, Father Joe Wild. He wrote a book called Men of Hope. And basically, that book was what we all are about. We are men of hope. We know that there are many people who are hurting, who are confused, who are stressed, who are in need of healing and forgiveness. We meet them every day. 
Many of them are ourselves. And yet, we come to bring hope. And that message of hope is Jesus Christ. Because without him, life is empty. I always think of the story of the four candles. I'm sure you've heard it before. These four candles had been burning for 2,000 years brightly. And they had names, peace, love, joy, and hope. And they were talking to each other. And they were saying how they had been burning brightly for 2,000 years, but they were tired. And first came up the candle of peace. He says, I've been the candle of peace. And for 2,000 years, I've been burning brightly, but I'm tired. Look at the world that we live in. There's violence, there's war, there's hatred, there's prejudice, there's racism. Please, after 2,000 years, blow my candle out. They blew it out. The second was the candle of joy. The candle of joy spoke. He says, for 2,000 years, I've been burning brightly as a candle of joy. But look at the world we live in. Oftentimes, there's not a lot of joy. There's pain, there's suffering, there's sickness. Blow my candle out, and they blew it out. The next candle was the candle of love. And the candle of love said, for 2,000 years, I've been burning brightly. But look at the world we live in. People don't forgive each other. They hang on to the past. There's no compassion. Please blow my candle out. And they blew his candle out. The final candle was the candle of hope. And the candle of hope spoke up and says, please, please don't blow my candle out. I'm the candle of hope. If you blow out hope, you will never have the possibility for peace, love, and joy. And then they relit their candles. We are men of hope. And as long as there is a little light in our world, there is never darkness. And so today, as jubilarians, we thank the Lord for the call that he gave us as young boys, maybe not as little as the boy in the gospel. And we thank God that he took our gift, our oblation, our offering, and he used it and continues to use it. We thank God for our families, our friends, our brother oblates who have been with us through the good days and the bad. We thank God especially for Mary, our mother, who made her oblation by offering herself to the Lord when she said that first yes. I'd like to end with a prayer that I actually pray at night. It kind of helps me to put perspective into my life. It's a prayer by Archbishop Oscar Romero. I think I'd like to end that way. Archbishop Romero wrote, it helps now and then to step back and take the long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is another way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are all about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We, as oblates, cannot do everything. And there's a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We as oblates may never, never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, 
not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. May God bless us on this jubilee, and may he continue to bless our yes. Amen. Amen.